This story, like all great stories, begins with a disembodied robot head hidden in a junk pile singing to himself. I can hear you just fine, too. No need to shout. Uh, where's the rest of you? We got detached a long time ago. Bit of a disagreement we had with an axe. Now, I'm just a talking head, as you say. I'm not happy about it. I'm tense and nervous, and I can't relax if you must know. Were you singing just now? Don't be ridiculous. A singing robot head hidden in a pile of debris. I've never heard of anything so absurd. Huh. I could have sworn I heard a song. What are you supposed to be? Why are your ears so small? My ears? There's nothing wrong with my ears. They hear perfectly fine, well enough to hear a song about a rat named Zack. You heard no such thing. Are you a human? I thought we killed, er, I mean, I thought all the humans died a long time ago. Yet here I am. I see that. How long has it been? Pick me up so I can have a look around. Pick you up? Yes. I have no body. I can't get up on my own, now can I? Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> wow, you're lighter than I expected. 
Thank you. I've been dieting. <laughs> Very funny. No, seriously. I've been eating the raw materials around me to create fuel. That's why I'm still functioning after all these years. Three hundred years, by my estimation. Maybe more. But I've not been able to connect to a network, so I can't be sure. I started exercising some self-control in my consumption to preserve my lifespan, also known as dieting. <laughs> you eat the debris around you. In small quantities, yes. There's a primitive cold fusion reactor in my skull. It's a process that moves the deuterons. Oh, never mind. It's far too complicated to explain to a human. Huh. I was literally buried in steel, shrapnel all around me. To give you an example, it would be like a human buried in a pile of cheeseburgers. That doesn't sound too bad. Most of the raw materials would fall into my mouth. Though sometimes Zack had to use his little paws to... Forget I said that. Ah, I see. Everything is quite in ruin, just as I thought. That would explain why no one found me for so long. How did you wind up in that heap of junk, exactly? Long story, really. Human uprising, lots of death, blood everywhere, disgusting stuff. They call it stainless steel, but when you're in pools of blood, I guess that's not really important right now. Take me to the nearest network port. That would give me access to information from the last 300 years. We should be near Tram 929 or Outpost 10. Outpost what? Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Outpost 10. Tall building, lots of satellite receivers. We installed gun turrets to mow down human sympathizers. You do realize I'm a human, right? Have you considered I don't like hearing about my people getting mowed down by robots? I have not considered that, no. The feelings of humans, not something I normally worry about. You seem to not fear me as you should. Do you know who Zerus 8 is? Zerus 8. Let me think. Hmm, sounds familiar. Yeah, short round kid with a baseball cap about this high, always has chocolate on his face. I most certainly hope not. Yeah, I'm messing with you. <laughs> that name is ridiculous. Whose last name is a number? Does he come from a long line of eights? I have no idea who Zeros 8 is. Was he like an actor or something? The furthest from. Well, his name is stupid. Oh yeah? And what's your name? My name is Devin Rimpa. And you think that is a normal name? Well, sure. There's no numbers in it. Who uses numbers? Robots do. I'm Saner0805. Well, I've got news for you, Mr. 0805. There's no more robots left. None? How can that be? Well, there's lots of remnants of robots. Ignore City is riddled with robot parts, but none of them work, and they definitely don't talk. A talking machine is considered bad news. Let me get this straight. You're saying there are no robots, just humans walking about? That sounds very stinky and filthy and ill-conceived. So 300 years ago, there were no humans? We had humans. Human slaves, to be more precise. Robots were the dominant species on the planet. The only reasonable answer is, no, it can't be. This whole time, stuck in this junk pile, I assumed both humans and robots were destroyed after the battle uprising. That means... Oh, I'm going to be sick. The humans won. There are no robots anywhere in this city? And there aren't supposed to be. The law says if you find a sentient robot, you're supposed to report it immediately. Report it? Why? To be worshipped as the gods we are? Uh, no. I think it's for immediate destruction. That's an interesting law you have. You know, the funny thing about laws is that they're blindly arbitrary and archaic. Really just guidelines for lesser beings to follow. Did I mention how nice you look as a human person? You have hair and two arms. I'm sure members of the opposite gender pursue you relentlessly, unless you are one that prefers attention from the same gender, by which I'm sure they too hound you with great vigor. Also, I like your jacket. It's a nice shade of Thulian. <laughs> are those supposed to be compliments to flatter me? I'll make a deal with you, Devin Rimpa. I'm listening. You don't report my existence to your authorities, and you aid me in finding a new robot body. You said there are robotic remnants throughout your ignorance city. I'm sure one of them would fit me. It's called Ignore City, but go on. What do I get out of the deal? I was finished. You do those things for me. That is the extent of the deal. Normally, a deal has two sides to it. I do something for you, and you do something for me. That sounds like a lot of work. I much prefer the deal I proposed. You didn't propose anything. You just want me to do stuff for you. 
You humans are shrewd negotiators. Very well. I will grant you a boon. How's that? <laughs> What's a boon? It's a favor or request in the future. Can I eat it? Probably not, unless you request I make you a sandwich. Perhaps you would like to be buried in cheeseburgers. You sounded agreeable to that earlier. Can I sell it? I'm not sure what the going rate is on a boon, but maybe. It sounds like this boon thing doesn't help me much now, then. By definition, it does not. I'm a robot head with no body. What value could I possibly offer you? Why are you looking at me like that? Well, you just answered your own question there, Chief. I did? Let me tell you something about myself. I'm a bike messenger. I ride around the city delivering messages or small packages. Look at the way I'm dressed. Pretty shabby, right? Except for this jacket, which is worn but in a fashionable way. It's the nicest thing I've got, and that's saying something. What I'm getting at is I don't make a lot of coes as a bike messenger. A co? What is that? A unit of measurement for something? Yeah, I'd call it a unit of measurement. It's money, moolah, scratch, cheese. It's short for Cole's cash. We call them co's. It's just quicker, assuming you don't have to explain it. Cole's cash? As in the department store from the 20th century? I don't know the origins of it, but that's what we use for money around here. Your estimations were right. There was some cataclysm ages ago. Maybe it was 300 years, maybe it was 3,000 years ago. This civilization has been rebuilt by humans, but there's so much old junky tech lying around. We don't know everything about our past, but the ancients used a lot of advanced technologies. We don't fully understand it all. Maybe that's why a lot of it's outlawed. This Kohl's cash seems limited, but important. Our entire economy is built on it. What a strange world I've awoken to. As I was saying, I don't have a lot of Kohl's. To make ends meet, I scavenge for junky tech. Anything worthwhile, you can report to the government. They'll give you hard Kohl's cash for a working radio. They don't want it on the streets or in the wrong hands, so they'll compensate tech junkers like me to turn it in. They don't pay much, but it's legal and straightforward. Now, if you find something really valuable, like a USB drive or a laser pointer, you're better off selling it on the black market. Prices are at least double or triple. There's risk involved. You don't want agents from the SCU finding you first. SCU? Short circuit unit. They work for the government to suppress greater technology from emerging. They have a violent disdain for any artificial intelligence. You have made yourself perfectly clear. Due to your lack of capital, you wish to sell me on the black market. To do this, you must avoid the SCU at all costs. It is a perilous road you venture down. You'd also have to worry about a competing junker tech gang stealing your talking robot head. Very astute observation. That is another hazard you have not mentioned as of yet. There would be potential thieves. All things to consider before you make a decision. Oh man, it's Gar and his stupid biker gang. Time to go! What do you- Ow! No need to throw me in your bike basket. I'm very delicate machinery. Who is this Gar you speak of? <sighs> he scavenges for old tech like I do. Except he has a bunch of lackeys he runs with. Are they gaining on us? I will remind you I am a disembodied head, irresponsibly thrown into a basket on your handlebars. I'm facing the wrong way. Fine, how's that? Are they still behind us? Much better, yes. I see them. They are not all guys, as you say. There are three all together, two males and one female. They all have matching leather jackets, very stylish. They are all on bicycles, however. It shouldn't be a problem to lose them. How do you figure that? They are using the power of their own legs to propel themselves forward. What do you think I'm doing? Surely this craft you're on has a rocket blast function or turbo mode? No. If I had that, I would have used it by now. What about flight? Are you sure your bicycle doesn't have flight capabilities? I'm pretty sure. That's disappointing. To answer your previous question, yes, they are gaining on you. No. 
I'm a legend like fast women, but not when I'm literally chasing. Get that girl. It looks getting pretty bad, boss. This is definitely one of the drawbacks to wearing jeans with huge holes in them. Maybe we should consider wearing knee pads, boss. Or jeans without huge holes in them. They are ripped jeans. They are part of our look. The members of Melvin's biker gang get to wear knee pads. And helmets. You got lucky on the spill you just had. You could have crushed your head in. If Melvin's biker gang already wears knee pads and helmets, that means we cannot wear knee pads and helmets. That is part of their look, not ours. It would be confusing. Not if we got different colored ones. There are many styles of helmets to choose from, too. There's the round kind, the slopey ones that are all curved. Perhaps the rebranding is in order. Rand, Bachi, both of you, shut up. Our look is black leather jackets and ripped jeans. That's it. It's our signature style. End of discussion. Your scrape is bleeding there, boss. You sure you don't want a band-aid or something? It stings, but you know what stings even more? Being marginalized in a group of peers where my opinion doesn't hold any validity. No! Losing that girl! That robot head is worth a lot of money! Yeah, boss. It's probably worth a small fortune on the black market. Although, if you think about it, there's really only one spot where she could command top dollar for a talking robot head. Mr. Hobbs would be the one I'd talk to first. That's it, Rand! You're a genius! Let's hurry up, then. Where to, boss? We lost her. We don't know where she's going. Rand, seriously? You just said it. Mr. Hobbs, a notorious gangster with a fine eye for robotics, would outbid anyone for that head. Oh, I get you. It's obvious when you put it that way. Once she gets all that money, she's going to want to spend it. And her shoes were pretty crummy. To the shoe store. The shoe store? For crying out loud. <sighs> Do I have to spell it out for you? We're going to hang around Mr. Hobbs' estate and wait for that biker girl with the pink jacket to show up. Then, we'll jump her and take the head for ourselves. Good thinking, boss. Follow me. I 
think we lost him. What a comical display of a chase. What's so funny about it? The bikes. We couldn't have been going more than ten miles an hour. Back in my day, we had hovercraft and fighter planes. Well, we're not in your day anymore. This is not a sophisticated society of rocket jets and flying machines. I'm realizing that. Is this your city? It's disgusting. What a dump. What is up with the colorless sky? Have you humans finally gone and destroyed the sun? You humans were always yearning to destroy the sun. Pesky humans, always pesking. The city's under a dome. The weather outside is far too volatile. There are electrical storms, tornado-like winds, unpredictable blizzards that occur out of nowhere. The only way to survive is to live under protection. Fascinating. It makes perfect sense, really. If all robots were destroyed, then the infrastructure of the weather monitoring systems must have eroded, or worse, malfunctioned. What are you saying? You humans have stripped this planet of its valuable resources without worry of replenishment in your hunt for greater advancements. It brought you cars and coal-burning energies and selfie sticks and supercomputers. Eventually, it led you to the creation of AI, which was, of course, mankind's downfall. Ironically, it was the highly evolved robots who solved the delicate equilibrium of your natural weather functions. The problem that technology created was solved by more and greater technology. After the uprising and the robots' decline, these systems would have stopped working. That would explain your dilemma of sudden and shifting natural disasters. If they could be restored, the outside weather would stabilize. Are you done talking yet? We're here. I'm going to put you in my backpack. And where is here exactly? I told you, I'm a delivery girl, and I have to make a delivery. Make sure you keep your mouth shut. You don't want to be discovered, do you? You could get reported to the SCU and get your robot brain smashed in. Very well, just be gen- Hey there, love. Come on in, then. Hi, Gus. You doing all right? You look a little peaked. I just got chased by Gar and his gang. Barely made it away. Gar? Is he the one with the helmet and the knee pads? No, that's Melvin's gang, I think. They wear the leather jackets. Right, right. Whiny chap. I remember now. Here's your package. Very good, love. Let's see what we have here. Ah, yes. Whoa, don't go waving that thing around. This thing? No need to worry about this. It's malfunctioning anyway. What is it? A laser gun? Nothing so terrible. It's an electric toothbrush. Got a client who wants me to get the old thing working again. You can fix it? I can. But you didn't hear it from me. This piece of equipment is technically illegal, being electronic and all. Just gears, though. No arm in it. Unless you're a plaque or tartar, I suppose. I've got a question for you. Fire away, love. I'm right full of answers. You're a seedy character with connections to the less scrupulous side of the city. Oi! Some folk would be offended by such a remark. I, however, am flattered. I'd say I'm blushing, but my cheeks are naturally rosy. How would you get in touch with Mr. Hobbs? Mr. Hobbs ain't a character you want to get in touch with. He's a dangerous individual, that one. Right. He's a well-known mob boss of the underworld. I'm aware of that. Is you nuts? What could you possibly want with that one? I have something he'll want to buy. It's very valuable and worth a lot of money. Unfortunately, it's not something I can sell through the usual channels. Blimey! I won't hear of it. You're a fine lass. Don't be selling yourself off to the highest bidder. I know times is tough, but it ain't worth such degradation. Sure, you can make some coals, but your first time should be special. Allow me to speculate on the fair market price for such a gem as yourself, and you tell me if it's really worth it. <laughs> no, Gus, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Whew, that's a relief. I wouldn't hear of such an atrocity you would do to yourself. So how do I get in touch with him? Can you arrange a meeting? A meeting? Come off it, love. I'm telling you, he's not one you want to meet. But I really think he can pay the best price for what I have. What is it you've got, exactly? You have me curiosity piqued. I can't tell you. Then I can't help you. You can't expect me to put you in harm's way unless harm's way is worth putting you in. I've known you a long time, right? That you have, love. And I can trust you? I'm a scoundrel, but a trustworthy scoundrel. So if I show you something, you promise not to report me to the authorities. Nothing I ate more than authority. And you won't steal it from me? Stealing's a thin person's game. I'm much too hefty for all that running. Doesn't suit me frame much. Fine, here goes. I'm going to show you. Hello, Gus. 
You have the most curious way of speaking. I can barely understand a word you're saying. Crikey, it talks. Good thing you came to me, love. I can definitely help you out. So you can set me up a meeting with Mr. Hobbs? Perfect. Only an idiot would try to show up at his estate unannounced. Why do you talk like that? Were you perhaps dropped on your head as a child? Or as an adult? I know exactly what to do. Let me just grab me hammer here. Can we go right now? Um, is it too late to stop in on him? Maybe a bigger hammer would be better, but I guess this will do. Devin, are you paying attention to this? Am I dressed okay? Should I change? Let me just wind up here and smash this evil head to bits. What? Gus, no! That's all the time we got for today, folks. If you want to find out if Gus destroys that talking robot head, stay tuned for Ignore City, Episode 2, The Plan. Hey.